if you click play on this video it's probably because you want to learn to make a wire trace um it can be really really simple i love to crimp wire traces it's a really really strong really really neat way to construct a trace if we get a close-up down here paul behind the camera can probably get on these components mm -hmm. at the side of my not not particularly big finger they're very very small so before we get into actually making a trace i've prepared some props so you can get the general idea of what's going on so if we imagine this cardboard tube is a crimp and this 10 mil bungee cord is our wire trace i can talk you through the general principles of putting a trace together um there's a very very strong way of constructing traces um where you double over your wire so the first thing to do is put your wire through your crimp i might have gone so wide now that this is going to go out of shot um and a lot of people when they construct a trace they'll put it back through like this so you've got a tag end there they'll shorten that till it's the size they want it and then they'll crimp that and then they'll go out and fish and wonder why the trace snapped it's not the strongest way um if you disagree with that feel free to drop a comment and tell us why um in my experience this, the strongest way to construct a trace give yourself plenty of tag end going through there because we're going to shorten this after without needing to cut it neil i'm on youtube man <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> okay um leave plenty of tag end because we're not actually going to have a tag end to cut off and if you choose to use titanium wire which i do it's very expensive and you don't really want to waste a single inch of it so lots of tag end we pull that through and then we take this tag end and we put it back through the crimp like this until you've just got a little bit peeping out like that and i'll show you on the uh, the smaller ones as we go on if we can get close enough then you take hold of that and you pull it back until this just disappears inside the crimp. And then we take the final bit and we pull until that is roughly, for me, roughly the size of whatever I'm attaching it to. So if, if that's a swivel, I'll try and make that around the same size as the swivel eye. And then you get like a fairly sort of symmetrical chain link effect. Um, you don't need a massive big loop if you've got a small eye on your swivel because the swivel don't give much more movement. Um, so I try and match them up symmetrically to what, whatever this is going to be attached to. So once you've pulled that through to that point, you then drop this in your crimping pliers and crimp it. And if I pull this out and keep it all together, what that gives you is it gives you a nice triple sort of uh, bunch of wire inside that to crimp it gives it lots to purchase on and lots to crimp down and spreads the load a little bit as well so we can ditch all the uh, the props now and actually get to doing a proper trace i'm using 30 pound wire here which is on the light end of predator fishing if there are large pike in your water but this is a nice size to go to if you're specifically targeting sort of jacks to uh, you know low doubles let's say um, on fairly light lows if you're fishing for perch or something like that and there are pike present um, they do this down as low as 15 pound breaking strain and that's a really nice thickness for getting lots of action in small lows for perch without sort of having this you know really sort of rigid kind of wire effect but at 15 pound it's kind of strong enough to handle you know jacks and slightly bigger that might come along when you're targeting perch if you're out and out fishing for pike i'd go for a much stronger trace you know if you if you were putting big jerk baits on this kind of size or you know um big sort of rubber you know soft plastics and things um i might go sort of 50 or 80 pound maybe more um but for sort of the canals where i fish you know there are not massive pike in there 30 pound if i'm fishing decent size lures at 15 pound if i'm using micro lures for perch so um this is 30 pound um it's afw 
titanium surf strand it's a seven strand mm -hmm. i'm not affiliated with these in any way so uh, if you go out and buy this we don't make a single penny um but uh, i found it to be the best stuff and that's matched with a, a number three the 30 pound matches with the number three crimps um most places where you buy it they'll have several sizes of crimps that match i think from memory 15 pound number one crimp 20 pound number two crimp 30 pound number three crimp so let me see if i can hold that so the camera can see can you get that on camera there paul yeah i'm going to try and stay as still as i can thread that through once and then if you've got something like a swivel to go on now is the time to put it on so the swivel goes on there then which can take really loads and loads of tag end because we're not going to lose anything go back through the crimp and i'll hold that there can you see that mm -hmm. and then we can pull that through and i'm going back a final time i'm doing it more by a touch than sight because i'm trying to show it and when i go through there can you see that and there paul yeah when i push this through we just want a tiny tiny bit to stick through can you see that okay so now we've got like a big bow tie what i want to do is grip that and pull on this piece and you'll see that loop can you see that yeah it's going through nice yeah until that just almost disappears there we go it's, i can i can see it if i turn it end on can you see it can you can you get that focus i can do it i'll try it yeah got it okay so it's just in there then I'll take hold of that and we can pull this end. And it's amazing how once this sort of doubled over piece is locked in, um, it doesn't tend to slide. When you pull, you can pull this as much as you like and the other bits just stay where they are. So I'm going to pull that until it's roughly the size of the swivel. Maybe a little bit bigger. We're looking at that gape as much as that gape, if that makes sense. So, you know, you don't want to pull it so tight that that really closes up and limits the swivel's movement. Can you see that, how the yeah, yeah, yeah. swivel moves? If we just poke it out a bit more, you want just that little bit of uh, mobility there so the swivel's free to kind of, you know, drop, drop around. So once we get to that point, we're ready to crimp. Here's where you need some crimping pliers. My pliers of choice are these Daiwa ones. I think they're Daiwa's Pro Rex. Um, you'll notice there's a couple of different. Can you see that? I'm waving it around like a madman. Yeah. <laughs> Wait while the camera catches up. <laughs> okay. At uh, this size, the uh, the larger of the two is about right. But um, if we can see that, basically you get the you can't really get that wrong it's pretty self-explanatory there's a little flat sort of dished out bit to put your crimp in and then there's a little masher that mashes down into it um in my experience the best way when you're crimping is to do one squeeze don't kind of mash it and go back and do you know multiple squeezes a single squeeze and you don't kind of want to get two hands on i mean it's very difficult to try and explain to someone through the internet how hard do you squeeze because for for some guy that uh, you know uh, swings a sledgehammer all day or uh, you know is down the gym five days a week uh, hard squeeze is different to someone who's got uh, you know skinny little arms um what i would say um if you're leaving big sort of imprints in your hands you're probably squeezing too hard um if you ever cracked a Brazil nut, it's about as much force as you need to crack a Brazil nut. Um, sorry if that doesn't help, but uh, it's the best I, best I can offer. So can you see that there, Paul? Yep. I'm going for one squeeze and you get a little bit of a crunch. And that's it. And there's no big imprint in my hand. And that, if I pull it out, you'll see it's got like a nice little set of imprints in it from the crimping jaws. Yeah, just twist it a little bit because it's not catching right quite. Just you tell me when you've got go. it. Yeah, that's good. So there's our swivel crimped on the end there. All we need to do now is measure that for the length that we want it. I'm going to make a 12 inch one. So if I drop that on my ruler, if I measure without the swivel, just put my fingernail on 12 inches there, I can get my cutters and cut that. 
and then we're going to repeat everything again i'm going to go a little bit quicker this time that goes on and then the next thing to go on is whatever you want attached in the eye of that crimp i'm putting a snap link on there there are so many different snap links for predator anglers uh, i really like these for my sort of smaller lures they're much easier to handle than, than some of the snap links that are out there it's not the strongest it's it's probably only just a little bit stronger than the strength of this wire um once you start to get up to 50 pound and 80 pound wire some of the ones were like double links where there's a, a snap link that goes on there and a snap link that actually goes on the lure they're probably stronger and i'd certainly use those if i was on 50 or 80 pound wire but for my light lure fishing that that's a lovely snap link um I'm sure there was something else I was going to say there. And <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Um, that was it. I've remembered. Um, if you're using very mobile baits that tend to turn over, like spinners, um, or you know, some, some things with veins really kind of skip around, um, you can put a swivel and snap link on at this end. But on a short lure for sort of canal distances where you're not making long casts, I find that the swivel at this end is enough to take out any twist. Um, I don't tend to use any baits that really kind of keep turning over in one direction and putting twist up the line. But if you do feel that you've got something extra mobile or you're casting long distances or you're fishing in rivers that have got a lot of flow, it might be worth considering a swivel between the end of the trace and the snap link. So you've got two lots of swivels taking out any twist. Um, it's not something that bothers me and I never really notice problems with twist. So. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before. That goes through there. Pull that tag end up. And then this is the bit where we get our length exactly right. I've just poked that through just enough. I'm going to hold it there for a second. Can you see that, Paul? Yeah. Poking through just enough. If I pull that till that disappears, just like that. And then I pull that. So we've got something like an eye. And again, you just want to make sure that you've got free movement. If I pull it too tight, you'll see it kind of loses that free movement. So just feeding a bit back out again. You don't want a great big loop, but just enough to promote some free movement there. And then we drop the crimps on this. don't know if you can pick it up on camera but I always like to have the crimp exactly flush with the edge of these jaws not let me do it wrong so we can uh, not sticking out a bit like that and not so far in that you kind of letting those close on this doubled over bit of line so just poked in there just flush with the edge of the jaws squeeze up with that light pressure and that's crimped and if i put that on there the overall length now can you see that can you get can you get close in on that mm -hmm. it's exactly 12 inches um so it, it's not crucial that it be exactly 12 inches but the thing is is if you measure the same measurement each time i could make 10 of these and i would not waste a single inch or a single millimeter even of this expensive titanium wire because you never need to trim a tag end off doing it this way and if I made 10 of these, they'd all be exactly that length. So, they, you know, they'd be like they'd been cloned in a factory. Um, so that's a pretty simple uh, job to do. And it can save you a hell of a lot of money if you use titanium wire. Um, I'm only aware of a couple of brands that make uh, titanium tracers. And I think for two of these, it's like eight or nine quid. So um, it's a hell of a lot of money. I'm going to pitch in from off camera and point out that this is braided titanium wire you will see single yeah. strand and good luck getting single oh, strand yeah, titanium just, uh, three yeah. times back through the... I, I suppose it's worth <laughs> just having a, a quick sort of uh, rundown on trace material because if you if you landed on this just wanting to know how to make a trace there's nothing wrong with using seven strand steel wire um it's quite supple it's very cheap it's very easy to manage and crimp but after you've had a couple of fish or you've hooked into some snags and pulled free, what you'll find is that lovely straight hanging wire will be all curly and jagged and it may even have had strands snapped and sort of wind back up themselves. 
and you'll end up with this horrible sort of pigtailing effect. Um, with titanium wire, it's virtually impossible to get it to do that. You have to really, really try. I've never had it happen on a fish's mouth, and I've only had it a couple of times when I've been in pretty sort of sharp edged, tenacious snags. Uh, the kind of thing that would have ruined any trace, really. Um, so, you know, it's not a great loss. But if you're finding that with steel traces, after two or three pike, um, you need a new trace. Titanium is definitely not false economy. It's really, really expensive. Um, I mean, I think there's something like, uh, ten, there's 10 feet on this, and I think it comes in like 15 pounds or something like that. So when you first look at it at the side of steel wire, you think, my God, that's expensive. But however many times it is more expensive than steel, it lasts many, many times longer than steel. So let's say, you know, it's four times more expensive than what you're paying for your steel wire. This will outlast four steel tracers and even eight or 10 steel tracers. Um, you know, you, you've really got to do something serious to damage this titanium to the point where it's not usable again. So I'm a, as you can probably tell, I'm a huge advocate of titanium and this is seven strand titanium wire. It's like a sort of cable um, twisted together. Um, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, if you disagree, drop us a comment and tell us why. It's best steering clear of the rigid single strand titanium wire if you want a supple trace. Um, it's not particularly nice to crimp. Uh, it's not particularly nice to fish with in my experience. Um, but the seven strand stuff, as I say, th this uh, AFW titanium stuff, I can't recommend it highly enough. I, I wish I did make some out of, uh, of promoting it. And, uh, you know, I wish I did get it for free, but I have to pay for it just like everybody else. Um, in terms of um, other materials, we'll probably look in a future video at uh, ultra heavy fluorocarbon for tracers. It's something that's sweeping predator angling uh, at the minute, and there's a lot of controversy over whether or not people should be fishing for toothy predators with it. Um, I'll reserve my opinion until we talk about this in a video. Uh, if you've got an opinion on it, or if you'd like to see more about that, don't forget to drop us a comment as well. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that notifications button. And for now, that's it from me. Join us next time with more rigs tips from Fishing Discoveries.